Guys, I'm going to explain to you where the so-called white man came from. It seems to me that as many of the sons of Shem are waking up and many of the true Hebrew Israelite blood descendants of Abraham, um, the first thing that seems to be uh, coming out from them is that the white man, the so-called white man, is the sons of Esau or Edomites, and which can't be further from the truth. Um, in this video today, I'm going to explain from Scripture I'm also going to go uh, over the book of Yeshar, the book of Hanak. Much and much of the content you're going to see today is from the scripture. The sons of Yapeth is how the so-called white man came about, um, as that Noah was born white, um, as that Noah was born white, um, as that Noah was born white, um, as that Noah was born white. Um, or an albino, and then that passed on to Yapeth, and from Yapeth to the peoples that went and dwelt in the lands of the north, which as that Noah was born white. So, by the land of Israel, among yourselves, according to the tribes of Israel, and it shall be that you divide it by lot as an inheritance for yourself, and for the strangers who sojourn in your midst, and who bear children among you, and they shall be to you as native born among the children of Israel. With you, they have an inheritance in the midst of the tribes of Israel. Praise be unto the Most High Yah. And it shall be that in whatever tribe the stranger sojourns, there you give him his inheritance, declares the Master Yahweh. That is declared by the Most High Yah. Let's look at some more scripture. This is contained in the book of Hanak. Um, and for those that do not have a Hallelujah Scriptures version, um, I, I'll have a link in the video description below to sacred text. Uh, dot com or that you can uh, read this with me uh, and it says in the chapter and after some days my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech and she became pregnant by him and bore a son and his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool and his eyes beautiful and when he opened his eyes he lighted up the whole house like the sun and the whole house was very bright, and thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of Righteousness. In Genesis chapter 5 we read, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah brought forth Shem, Ham, and Yapeth. And you see there, it's, it's actually backwards um, as to how that they were actually born in accordance with what Yeshua says. So that gives more credence also to why that the... Um, Albino uh, gene, you know, would pass on to Yapeth, and then Sham and Ham would retain um, the regular melanin. Um, just a thought on that looking back now. Also, uh, as we get over here into the generations of Sham, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Yapeth, as we come down here to the third verse, you can see once again Ashakanaz. The Ashakanazi Jews are not the true Hebrew Israelites, all right? It is those that are so-called black people. The, and granted, some of them are Hamites. So you have to, it's only those under the curse of Deuteronomy 28, and they, it's pretty easy to figure out who those are. Uh, I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other elders, Akim, you brother, brethren, you followers of the truth. And let me say shalom to the elect. Shalom. Anyway, I want to go in this video, um, kind of a inspired video by um, the elder and brother, Yashawamba Remnant Save 144 is a screen channel, YouTube channel. And he did a video talking about where's Yapith in the I mean uh Japheth in the prophecies. Okay. So I was inspired to um yeah it, it inspired me. I said, well let me go a little deep a little deeper in this Japheth thing. So it is taught that Japheth got his complexion 
from Noah. And Noah was an albino, okay? And he passed the gene on down to Japheth. Now, this is a divine prospect doctrine or a doctrine he learned from the colleges and seminary schools. So the Adumians, the, the real Adumians can literally slither on out, out of the way, okay? And hide themselves behind the curtain like in, uh, what's that movie, The Wizard of Oz? When they say, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain, right? Because he's pulling the strings to try to get you to follow and believe these ridiculous doctrines, right? <laughs> this is ridiculous. And ultimately, you can't save them. You guys with these crazy books and these crazy doctrines, there's nothing you can do. You cannot uh, cut off with the most high set up. So I just thought that, you know, and it, they don't fit the prophecy. So where, where is the prophecies of Yapeth or Japheth? Where is the, uh, a Japheth? Where is the prophecies by process of elimination? So then he goes into the strangers Anyway, let me go real quick, Ezekiel, um, let me go real quick, Ezekiel 47 and 22, and it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by the lot and inheritance unto you and to strangers that shall join among you, which shall beget children among you, and they shall be unto you as, a, as born in a country among the children of Israel, they shall have inheritance with you among all tribes. So... The whole point of us waking up to the fact that we're Hebrew Israelites because we're going to lead in the coming kingdom. And judgment is coming. Okay? Starting with the house of Israel. You know, our own people. So anyway, I wanted to start with the word strangers here. Okay? And it says unto you, 8.16.16, it says, A temporary inhabitant, newcomer, lacking inheritance rights, the foreigners in Israel throw conceited rights. So when you go to Acts 2 and 5, it speaks of um, the Israelites come from all nations, you know, under the heavens, you know, and to sojourn or whatever, or to, to keep the holy days. Okay, so sometimes it's talking about heathens and then sometimes it's Israelites. Again, they're homographs. Words that spell the same, but they're used in different terminologies. Like you tie, you tie a shoe, you tie a race. Your necktie. Okay, but anyway, the um, the reference for this, just like in the Bible Hub, uh, um, Blue Letter has references, Exodus 2 and 22, and she shall bear him a son, and he called his name Gershom. This is talking about Moses' son. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. So this also proves you can be an Israelite and is a stranger. You had Israelites in Egypt, okay? You had Israelites in different parts of the um, regions and you got Israelites today who scattered due to Romans 28 64 throughout the globe all over the place okay so let me go on down to another reference I mean another part in the scripture it says you and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel so when it says and they shall be unto you born H249 it says a native of the rising soil rising from the soil a native or it says a man native Israelites native Israelites okay so you got to go into these references in the text to get a more proper understanding these people just pick up the book and they just read and they take it for what it is okay and that's it okay okay so anyway Let's go on to, this guy said, um, Noah was an albino, and he passed it on down to um, Japheth. So that's why I said Shem, Ham, and Japheth. When it should have said Japheth, Ham, and Shem. No, it's just that, this is the slickness of these guys. It's just that it says Shem, Ham, and Japheth, because Shem would have been written first to the right, and read to the left. But he's saying, because it's printing in the English, 
it says jab it last that that was actually first and to prove that that's why jab have got the uh the uh the albino look or some crazy madness man so anyway when you look at uh shim it would have been shim first anyway because shim was the one that covered up his uh the father's nakedness first anyway so it would only make sense and ham got the uh, and japheth help but ham's son got the curse which ultimately that is a curse that your son has a curse so i just wanted to touch on that so let's go to genesis 6 and 9 it says these are the generations of noah noah was a just man and perfect in his generation noah walked with yahweh noah walked with yahweh so i have to have a ask a question how this man noah who was a just man and perfect in his generations and noah walked with yahweh but he was leprous but he was perfect in his generations but somehow he was leprous let's go to the book of numbers let's go to the book of numbers i'm gonna just try to make this real quick and show you leprous leprosy uh, being albino is not um you know is a form of a curse and although our people have, have been cursed as with those things as well but noah was perfect in his generations okay um this is the story with moses and aaron and miriam it says and the anger of the lord was kindled against them and he departed talking about uh miriam who was running her mouth about moses marrying a woman of another nation and a cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold miriam became leprous white as snow right white as snow right and we would have saw that as a form of an albino and aaron looked upon miriam and behold she was leprous and aaron said unto moses alas my lord which uh, aaron was older moses older brother and he asked him and said hey my lord talking to um, um moses right i beseech thee lay not the sin upon us well moses would uh remember that moses was like the mediator with the most high wherein you know where we have done foolishly wherein we have sinned okay so that would have been a curse of leprosy but here it says in genesis that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and walked with Yahweh. So Yahweh is, is, is explaining hair of wool, the ancients of days, his son was a, a so called black man, but somehow Noah was a, a white man. So this would also, this is a doctrine that also teaches that at, right after the flood, Noah would have been a white man. That's where the white man started from Noah. Basically. This is what they're saying. Let's see by process, process of elimination. Isaiah, Obadiah 1 and 4, Salakia. Um, well, 3. The pride in thy heart have deceived thee, though thou dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, saith the Lord, uh, that's, that says in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So process of elimination who builds tall um, rocks and dwell in them even to this day who would that fit Japheth <laughs> where's Japheth though thou exalt thyself as an eagle and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars well is Japheth set as uh, exalt itself as an eagle and secondly Where's Japheth in, in these, all these prophecies? When is he supposed to run the world? Because it says in the end time there's a particular people who will rule this world. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. That's Japheth. Some people try to say um, the Adumians is the, the Muslims. You know, this crazy. Weird, crazy doctrines. Though thou exalt thyself as an eagle and though thou set amongst nest amongst the stars. Who run in the world? Who has these power structures? Who got satellites? Where's Japheth? That's what I bring thee down, saith the Lord. This is an excuse to slither out these scholars and you know, screw your heads up, and that's what it, that's all right. 
because it's not meant for you to get. If these came to thee in if robbers by night, would they not have stolen till they had enough? If grape, grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? This goes to Habakkuk 2 and 5. Where they stole lands and moved peoples far from their borders. Where's Japheth? How are the things that Esau searched out? How is his hidden things sought up? Come on, man. You can read this whole book of um, Obadiah, which will link who's who according to the Bible. What race, what people. Okay? It also says, um, But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, and the day that he became a stranger... Neither should thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Okay. Where's Japheth? I mean, we could say this over and over again. Where the heck is Japheth in all this, man? Right? This whole book is about mainly the Israelites, obviously. But their one enemy is, these, is the uh, Edomites. Jacob and Esau. Okay? You're taking credit away. You know? For the day of the Lord is near and upon all heathen. So no matter what denomination you try to fit them in, they still going to get what they get. But we know what's going to get what they're going to get. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, they shall swallow down, and they shall be though as they have not been. Right? Uh, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, but and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord Yahweh have spoken it. So, I, I don't know what to get out of that. These, these are some weird doctrines made up. They just pull them out of the thin air. You know, you got to watch these doctrines, man. You know, the misinformative doctrines. I mean, you can bring out a doctrine saying that we're living in a spaceship. And Jake will validate it. And he'll go to some deep research. And he'll bring it out that we literally living in a spaceship. Okay? Whether people believe that or not. They said the earth was flat. They all have these doctrines, man. And this is the sickening. And this is the fight that we have to fight. There's no way you're going to sit up here and we're not going to do a video. Because you said Noah is an albino. Is, is the, where the white race started. That is crazy. That's all I have on that. Shalom.